Hello, I'm Richard with ev for You Custom Conversions. And today, we're gonna to talk about a subject we've talked about before, and that's bottom balancing the batteries. But it's gonna be a little different this time. Stay with me. So today, I'm not talking about how to bottom balance. I'm just, or why you'd want to bottom balance, or anything like that. I'm just gonna show you a different way to do it. In other words, in the past, we've shown you one of the ways that we do it, and that's with the uh, uh, Cell Pro Power Lab. And it's just a convenient, easy way for us to do it and we do it all the time, so the, I don't know, $300 expense is not as big a deal. But if you're doing it one time, you're doing your, your project, and you don't ever plan on doing another conversion, you're gonna bottom balance these batteries one time, and that's it. So why have a $300 investment? So there's another way to do it that's quite a bit under a hundred dollars okay so what we have here is a JLD 404 which we're going to use in the project anyway no additional cost and we have a relay we're going to use several of those no additional cost and we have a couple switches that we use um, you don't necessarily have to, but I'm gonna show you why we do. And then we've got 12 volt battery. You can simply use the battery that you can use for an auxiliary battery. And we have the uh, lithium iron phosphate cell that we're wanting to bottom balance. So I'll show you a schematic in a moment, but we're just gonna walk through this, uh, you know, visually here in this physical example. So what we have is a positive negative coming off our 12 volt battery. And they go to the positive negative on the JLD 404, the 12 volt positive negative. And that's uh, uh, terminal one is positive, terminal two is negative. And all we've done is put a switch in line so that we can turn the JLD 404 on or off. The other switch just allows us to turn off the relay, which basically is turning off the load. So that's kind of the, the 12 volt setup. The 12 volt is also going to operate our relay. And I'll show you that in a moment. The other connections to the JLD 404 are the negative of the cell that we're doing right here, which is number 10. And then number six, which is the positive. And then we're using pins 15 and 16 on this side. 
which just happened to be J2 uh, normally closed. You could use uh, 19 and 18, which are J1 normally closed, doesn't matter. So anyway, what we have is we have the positive lead, and this is uh, sized for the load, and we're going to talk about what kind of current flow we have in a moment. But we have this line here goes to our resistor. Now this is a 0.1 ohm 300 watt resistor. This is our load for discharging this. That's going to that load's going to be dissipated in the form of heat, and this will get so hot as to not touch it. And we'll talk about how much power is being consumed in a moment also. So it goes through the, the load or the resistor. It's going through our relay and back to our battery. So there's your series circuit. Through the relay, through the resistor, through the battery. Okay. Now all the JLD404 is doing is the built-in relay in this in this case we're using J2 is switching this uh, 40 amp relay that we have right here. It's a regular automotive relay we're using. Okay, so the 12 volt battery is providing power for our JLD 404 and the power to activate our relay. This is simply being discharged through this resistor. Okay? So let's take a look at it in schematic form real quick. But anyway, here's a crude little drawing of what I just showed you. So you can see we have our lithium battery that we're discharging goes through the relay, through our load, and back. And the 12 volts Here's our switch, it's powering the JLD 404, and power goes through the relay, our secondary switch we had there, through the coil and back. So the JLD 404 is simply turning this on and off, and we want it to do that so that when we discharge this to the minimum voltage that we want to discharge to, that the thing will shut off by itself. That's the whole purpose of this layout is to discharge this battery automatically without us having to sit here and wait for it to hit a certain voltage. When it does, it's going to shut off all by itself. That load's going to shut off automatically. So let's talk about that. So what we have here is Ohm's Law, which says that current equals voltage divided by resistance. And we're also going to talk about the power and power is volts times amps. So, how many amps do we have going through the wires? And, and you know, how did we choose the size of wire? Well, we took our 3.3 volts, which is going to be the maximum that we're going to have in this uh, project here, and we're dividing it by the 0.1 ohms of our load, our resistor. And that gives us 33 amps. That's the maximum current that we'll be drawing through this uh, circuit here. And so if we then take the voltage, the 3.3 volts times that current, it tells us that we're going to be uh, consuming or putting out 108.9 watts. So 108.9 watts is enough that this resistor is going to get hot enough that you don't want to be laying your hand on it. The minimum we're going to take this down to is 2.5 volts. So that's where we're going to shut off. So when we shut off, 2.5 volts divided by 0.1 ohms would be 25 amps. And so 2.5 volts times 25 amps would be 62.5 watts. Okay? So that's how we um, you know, those are the figures that we use for sizing the wire and so forth. 
Well, the next thing that people will want to know is how do we program the JLD 404 to do this? Well, let's first take a look at the back. We're at 3.3 volts, so we're running on the scale on uh, number six. And number six is the 100 volt scale. So you got 500 and 100. So we're running off that, and then number 10 here was the common. So that's our negative, this is our positive. So now let's take a look at, at programming the JLD 404. Well, the base programming, we need to enter code 36. So there's 3, 6. And we're not dealing with a, a shunt in this. All we're worried about is voltage, so we can skip through all those. So now we have the voltage settings. And so we're set on the 100 volt setting. Okay, that's what, what it reads when we have zero volts. That's what it reads. And that's what it would read if we had full scale. And this is the decimal point. We're only using one. Okay, so that's setting up the meter. Now, to set up the relay, we're going to enter 0001, and that takes us to the relays. We're not, we have it set up on J2, so I'm going to skip through all the J1 related one. On J2, we're using volts, okay? You can use amp hours, amps, or volts. We, of course, were using volts. Then this is our, our, our high or upper setting, and we have that set at 3.1 volts for this demonstration. That's not where you would normally have it set. Normally, we would set this at 2.5. And then we have this set at 3.5 because we're not ever going to reach there. That makes sure this thing is on during our entire discharge setup. So, I'm going to turn this on. How this is set up is because we're on the normally closed settings, is that power is going to come from our 12 volt supply. It's going to go through J2, which is normally closed right now, and it's in the off position. When J2 is latched, this will come on, and it'll open, and it'll shut this off. And it's set to come on at 3.1 volts. So we don't have to sit here and wait for it to do all that. I know that it's going to do that fairly soon now. So as soon as I turn on this switch over here, you zoom out a little bit. So as soon as I turn on this switch, our relay is going to close. We're going to have a load, and this will drop. And we'll see how long it takes here, so you might have to be patient. And I can feel it. I don't know if you could hear it, but anyway, this is on. This is going to heat up. I mean, it takes a minute or two for this to get nice and hot, but over time it does. We just have it on this piece of scrap uh, that's nice and thick aluminum. Just acts as a little bit of a heat sink, but most of this heat's just dissipated to the air. This gives us a, a base to lay things on and keep it from moving around. And you want it on something because it does get hot. You don't want to mount this on a piece of wood or something that will melt or uh, eventually 
char or burn or whatever. So on a piece of aluminum, we don't have to worry about it. It protects our workbench from this uh, resistor. So what will happen is when this gets down to 3.1 volts, when the battery does, this calb cell, then J1 will come on, which will, you know, open. There it goes. Now it'll stay open, so I don't have to be around. This this shut off at at 3.1, and even though the voltage bounced back up after the load was removed, it's still not going to. Um, come back on and, and further deplete my cell. So that's all there is to it. So what I'm going to do is I'll reset it by shutting it off. That'll let that relay unlatch, turn it back on. We're at uh, 3.2 volts. We'll reconnect our load. And it should repeat again. So you got to watch fast. It'll go down to 3.1. You'll see the J2 light come on. It's right there. So there you had it. The 3.1 is pretty quick. As soon as you drop this load off of there, that you know, close to 100 watt load, it jumps back to 3.2 pretty quick. And that's just for demonstration purposes, I have them set real close. Normally, like I said, we would have the one setting set at 2.5 volts. So this is going to go for quite some time to take this down to um, 2.5 volts and then once it does you know and it's going to bounce back but it's only going to bounce back to like 2.89 somewhere in that realm okay so i hope that kind of gives you an idea of another way to bottom balance and the only component that's not going in your conversion that you would have to purchase would be this uh, load. And there's other things that you could use for a load. Um, and I don't recall how much these are. No additional cost. No additional cost for the relay or even the switches. You'll probably be using those in your conversion. So hope you enjoyed the video. If you have any questions, Remember to please address them to info at ev And uh, we'll see you next Wednesday. Hopefully we'll have uh, uh, our adapter coupler in for the uh, uh, Mercedes project and we can start working on uh, mounting the motor in there. We'll have something new for you next Wednesday. So we hope you join us. Till then, take care and enjoy the drive.